In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a house fire effect inside of Adobe After Effects using stock footage. So let's get into it. So before we jump into Adobe After Effects, it's really important that we've got two things. First of all, we need some footage. Now, in my example, I've just put my phone onto a tripod. And as you can see, it's just a static shot of my living room. But you'll also notice that there's this flashing light. Now, I've achieved that by putting on one of my video lights and just turning the brightness up and down. Doing this is just creating that flickering fire effect and mixing this practical lighting with our stock footage digital effects is really going to marry the two up together. So I would definitely recommend doing the same for your footage. Then of course, once you've got the video footage, we need to make sure that we have some stock footage. Now, this video is not sponsored, but I downloaded my assets from Production Crate. They've got a really awesome selection of fire effects, smoke effects, and other effects as well that you can download, but I've just downloaded a selection of effects. So once you've got those downloaded and you've got your footage, let's jump into After Effects and have a look at the edit. So this is our footage into After Effects. You can see we've got this flicking light, which is helping us, but we just need to go ahead and import some assets. So I'm just gonna go through to my finder. And as you can see, I've got different elements of fire. So I've got ground fire, ceiling fire, wall fire, I've got airborne debris, I've got smoky atmosphere, I've got falling assets, but I'm just gonna start with some wall fire. So I'm just gonna import all of these wall fire assets. And I'm just gonna drag one of these onto the video. So as you can see at the moment, this is way too large. So I'm just gonna press S on the keyboard to load scale. We'll scale this down, and then I'm gonna select toggle switches slash modes to load mode, and I'll change the mode to lighten. Or alternatively, you can change this to add. There we go, that looks pretty cool. So let's just see how that looks in the space. So you can see this would be touching the top. So I'm just gonna move this up towards the ceiling. There we go. But at the moment, I feel like it looks a little bit too large. So I'm just gonna scale this down, move this up here. And there we go, that looks pretty realistic. If by the way, you feel like it's not looking right. So that looks a bit on the yellow side, you can always change this from add to screen. And that will look a little different. Or alternatively, you can change it to lighten as well. It's completely up to you and what works for your scene. Now, when you look at real footage of a burning building, the fire is really bright and overexposed. So we want to do the same thing here, we can really overexpose the fire. So if we drop levels onto this asset, and we pull this up, so we pull the input white up, we can overexpose the fire, or alternatively, which I prefer, we can make the location a bit darker. So instead of adding levels onto this there, we can drop levels onto our original footage, and we'll pull the gamma down a touch. And this means the location looks dark, but the fire is gonna look really bright. As you can see, this orange light is really starting to pop when we pull this exposure down. There we go. So now you can actually go through all of those different blending modes again. So let's see what lighting looks like. Not great in this example. Let's go for screen. Again, not entirely great in this example. So I'm just going to leave add for now because that looks that looks good. So now we can just keep working through our different assets. So we've added in this top one so we can move down to the next one. Again, we'll change this to add. We'll press S on the keyboard to load scale and we'll pull the scale down and see what this is doing. So this is also touching the ceiling. So I'm just gonna move this up here on the left. So I'm just gonna move this up here and I'm gonna have it touching the ceiling again. But again, you can see I'm gonna need to pull the scale down. Or alternatively, I could actually have the fire coming from behind the TV potentially. So I'm just gonna scale this first layer up a touch. And now I'm just gonna go to that original layer. I'm gonna move that onto the top. So I'll make a copy, we'll go Command C, Command V, move that up to the top. And then I'll just zoom in and I'm just gonna draw a mask around the TV. There we go, let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go into that top layer. We'll go into the mask and we'll just pull the mask feather up just to blend that a little bit, but not too much. As you can see, if I change the quality to full, the fire is now appearing in front of the TV. So we just need to pull that down a touch. 
So let's go for five maybe, and then I'll just move that mask up a touch. So I'll create a new point in the middle, move that middle point up, and that should help to get rid of that. If not, feel free to pull the feather all the way back down to zero. But this is what we have so far. And I think that's looking pretty cool. I'm going to have to pull the quality down to half though, because fully struggling a bit. And that's already looking really good. So now we can focus potentially on the next round of fire. So let's go to this layer. We'll drop this on top and let's see what we're working with. So we'll just solo this to begin with. We'll scale this down. And you can see this is climbing up the wall, so it's a smaller bit. So we'll just change the mode to add again. And we'll just add this up here. There we go. That is looking pretty good. Although I feel like this shouldn't be as large as it is. So we'll just pull the scale down and move this up. And generally, that's always what I would say to check when you're adding in stock footage. Make sure the scale feels appropriate because, yes, I could just have this fire in the foreground looking really large, but it feels too big for the scene. So because these stock footage elements have been filmed within a different scene, you want to make sure that the scale matches up with your scene perfectly. So it does take a little bit of time messing around with this, trying to find the right scale and the right position. But once you do find that, it will really help to pay off. So let's go down to another one. We'll go to wall fire 21. That's quite a big one that is. We'll pull this blending mode to add again. And I'm going to add this onto the wall next to the TV. And let's see what it's doing at the top. You can see it's going to wisp around here. So I'm just going to increase the scale, move the position up to here. And that looks really nice. Let's move down to the next one. Let's see what we've got here. Wallfire 22. There we go. So this one's a bit more on the subtle side. So we'll just pull this again to add. We'll scale this down. So I'll press S to scale that down. And I'm going to drop this one, I think, just behind the TV. Just so it's coming out from the side of the TV. So just make sure this is under that TV layer. So that'd be this one under the TV layer. You can see that's coming out from behind the TV. Although, if you look, it looks like the bottom of the fire feels like it should be resting on this unit here. So I'm just going to drag that down. There we go. And that looks a little bit more realistic, although I just need to budget up a touch. And this is what we have so far. So that's looking really good, but there's definitely a few areas that we need to work on. We need to fill this gap and then maybe have a fire in front of the sofa as well. So let's go to... Our finder, let's have a look, see what we've got. We've got ground fire, we've got falling fire. Let's go for ground fire. So let's go for ground fire 50. We'll drop this into our scene. So we'll drop that on top of everything. We'll scale this down. And there we go. I'm just going to move this where it would be roughly in front of the sofa. And we'll change the blending mode to add. So as you can see, these flames are just going to be popping up from behind the sofa. So I just need to go ahead and make another copy of the scene. So we'll just copy the original footage, drag that to the top. And now I'm just going to go in and draw a mask around. So I'll select the pen tool and I'm just going to draw a mask around this sofa. Make sure you do a really clean job of this, by the way, because if you do a messy job, then the fire will poke through random areas of the mask and it will really give the effect away. So make sure your mask is as clean as possible. There we go. And then once you've done that, you can see that effect now looks really cool. You can actually move this fire up a little bit more now. So I'm just going to move this layer up just so that it comes up even higher. And that's starting to look really intense. Just before we carry on with this video, I'm going to take a quick break to talk about my Skillshare courses. If you're enjoying these YouTube videos, but you would prefer more long form content, then my Skillshare courses are perfect for you. I have a two hour plus course all about Adobe After Effects, and it teaches you everything you need to know to get started and to get familiar with the interface and how After Effects works. So if you're interested and you want to learn more, then please feel free to check the link in the description below. Now back to the video. But we need to go ahead and add the other assets in now. So first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and add some ceiling fire. So I'm just going to go through ceiling fire seven. We'll drop this in. Drop that on top of everything. Again, we'll change that to add. 
We'll pull the scale down, so press S and move that up. And then I'm just going to move this to the top of the screen, just out of frame slightly. Just so we're starting to catch it up there. Like I said before though, this is definitely just going to take a little bit of experimentation. So feel free to jump in, move things around. If it doesn't look quite right, take it out or try and reposition it. It's completely up to you. This is very much a case of trial and error. But with that in place, we can now move on to the next round of assets. And that would be some falling fire from the ceiling. So I'm just going to drop this in on the top of everything. You can see fire is going to fall from the ceiling and land on the ground. So we'll just change this to add. And I'm just going to drop this below the sofa level so that it disappears behind the sofa. And that should disappear. So it should fall down and drop behind the sofa. I'm just going to solo that layer and the sofa layer. So this is what that looks like. You can see that is just going to drop down into the scene. And I'm just going to delay that a little bit. There we go. So that is just falling down into the scene and that drops behind the sofa. So we'll just turn that solo off and that should now turn everything back else on. But let's see what we've got left. So you can see we've got some airborne debris which we can add in. We've also got some more falling fire assets. But I think now I'm ready for some atmospheric smoke. So I'm just going to drop this smoky atmosphere one just on top of absolutely everything. I'm just going to stick this on the top and pull the blend mode to screen. As you can see, that is now looking really intense. That smoke has really just added that extra layer of drama onto this effect. Of course, we also just need to go ahead and make some more adjustments into the scene. So I'm just going to add a layer new adjustment layer. I'm going to add this below that smoke layer. Then I'm just going to draw a few masks. So I'm going to go to the ellipse tool and I'm just going to draw an ellipse tool up here. One over here and then I'll just draw one over here and I'll make sure that is behind the sofa layer. So the sofa layer is here, that's behind the sofa layer. I'll also make sure that is behind the TV layer as well. So I'll just drop this under everything. So stick that towards the bottom. Then I'm just gonna go into levels and I'm just going to increase the intensity of these levels. So I'm just going to increase the input white, I'm going to increase the gamma, and then I'm just going to go into all of those masks and I'm just going to increase the mask feather all the way up to the point where we can no longer see that hard edge. So that's about 150 in this example. So as you can see, that is how that is now looking, but I'm just going to go into that adjustment layer. We'll press T on the keyboard to load opacity. Then I'm going to select option, hold option on the keyboard, select opacity. So select the stopwatch icon. And we're going to add in the expression wiggle, open bracket, 5, 20, close bracket. And that's just going to fluctuate the brightness of that adjustment layer over time. So it's not a constant brightness, it's constantly flickering over time. If I just solo the adjustment layer and the background layer, you'll see this is what those adjustment layers are doing. You can see there's that really intense flickering effect coming from those. So even though we've got flickering in the original footage, having that flickering coming in on that adjustment layer is going to adjust everything else within the scene. And then of course you can add an extra layer of drama onto this and add just a little bit of a handheld camera shake. And in order to do that, we just want to select all of the layers. So we'll go Command and A. We'll right click, select Precompose, and we'll call this Fire Precomp. Then we're just going to go into Position. Again, we're going to hold option, select the stopwatch icon, and we'll type out the expression wiggle, open bracket, 3, 20. Close those down again. And then that is just going to add some basic handheld camera movement into this. If I just go into the fire pre-comp and I only solo the original background layer, you can see this is how that is going to look. So you can dial this down or you can dial this up as much as you want. Essentially, the higher the number, the more intense the effect is going to be. So obviously, if I went for 20, 50, this would be very intense. So I think somewhere around 210, 215 should give us a realistic handheld camera movement effect. Of course, though, the problem is we are going to see the edge of the frame. As you can see, if I pull the quality up to full, you can see we're catching the top of that frame there. So this is where I can just go into effects and presets, search for motion tile. We'll drop that on and we'll change the output width to 300. 
the output height to 300 and we can just select mirror edges. And as you can see, it's just going to fill in the edges of the frame with a mirror of our composition. So if we just go back into our main fire pre-comp and we make sure that the bottom layer is not soloed anymore, so all layers are on, we can just go back to our main composition. We can render this out, play this back, and you'll notice you've got this really awesome fire effect. Now, if this was my example, I would go back in and I would just add a few more fire assets, maybe add one more into the floor down here, maybe add another bit of falling debris in the foreground here. But you can dial this up or tone this down as much as you want. It's completely up to you. But generally, I would say just adding in this extra layer of smoke on top of the effect really helps to just tie everything together. So make sure when you're doing this effect not to neglect the smoke. Yes, when you're doing a house fire effect, you need to think about the fire. But when there's fire, there's also smoke. So just adding in this layer of smoke really just ties the whole scene together. So there you go. That is how you create a house fire effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.